Hi, everybody. Thanks again for joining us on Celebrating Act Two, where my good friend Art Kirsch and business partner, by the way, are with the lovely Michelle Fabrega, our love and relationship coach for Celebrating Act Two. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Hi, Michelle. Um, I have a, a question that's uh, uh, been bothering me for a while, and I'd like it, maybe you could help address this uh, uh, on what to do about it. Uh, I've noticed um, uh, from time to time that uh, even with myself in one instance, uh, where uh, long-term friendships have turned into a one-way street where uh, where there used to be give and take and everybody was taking care of each other, but it seems to become a one-way street. And I see that with other people as well, uh, where one one of the people in this friendship becomes the, a needy one as opposed to uh, fully sharing in the friendship. Uh, what can be done about that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think um, that happens, right? I mean, sometimes we have friendships that you know, we feel really close to and connected with, and um, there's this mutuality and care, you know, where there's a symmetry, right? The, the give and take. Um, but then we sometimes have people in our lives that, you know, need a lot from us. They're asking things from us, they're making demands, and or they're maybe in some kind of like drama or chaos. And um, so it just, we find ourselves maybe even ignoring their calls even, which, you know, is understandable, but it doesn't really feel that good. So. So I think this is a, a great topic, and I, I think there's there's a lot of options here, but it it um it takes a little fortitude, I have to say. You know, it's it's not easy to navigate. So um, you know, the first thing I like people, you know, invite people is to look at you know what it what are your criteria for for your friendships, right? Because um, you know, obviously I'm hoping that for a romantic relationship, you know, you have a criteria of some sort, and um. At least I hope you have enough criteria for that. So this is a similar idea with friends. And I, I realize it might sound a little analytical or kind of calculating, but I believe that we really do this kind of thinking, but we just aren't conscious of it. So it's really good to notice what is it you want and need from your friends. And, um, you know, some of the things might, you know, these are some things to kind of jog your memory around that, but, you know, how do you want to feel when you're interacting with this friend and, you know, what kind of trust do you want? Uh, how do you communicate? Um, are you responsive to each other? Do you feel cared for or do you feel judged? And um, do you feel like somebody's regularly making demands of you and expecting you to, you know, show up right there every time they need anything and, um, you know, do you get equal time? And, you know, sometimes over the course of a long relationship, there might be times in one or the other person's life where it kind of balances out where someone's going through a divorce or they just, you know, had a death in their family. And so sometimes there is a little more of asymmetry. But if it starts to just go in a certain direction, if you notice yourself feeling resentment, it, it's probably time to talk to them and um, and, and bring this up. Hmm. You know, you, you bring up a good point, and that is, uh, you made me think of of uh, a long term friendship as not unlike a marriage. Uh, a re it's a re it's an important relationship. Uh, you've spent time with this person. You've enjoyed each other's company. You've had a lot in common, or something mm -hmm. in common that made you friends. And maybe something's changed, and you need to talk about it. You really need to. Uh, discuss it. You owe it to that person, to that friendship. Yeah, yeah. And you owe it to yourself, too, to be, you know, to be enjoying this friendship and not feel like it's a burden or, you know, it's an obligation like, oh, geez. Like, so that's not a good feeling to have. And, you know, it, it, I'm sure if they knew that you felt that way about them, they probably don't want that either. Right. So it's always good to, you know, um, you know, be honest and truthful with yourself first, just to notice that. And um, and some friendships, you know, a longer friendship, right, probably demands more willingness to roll with it and and more communication, right? So regardless, though, I really invite you to use care and love when yes. you talk to this person. And um, and one of the ways to kind of start the conversation, and it's it's not easy, but it's like, you know, I care about you, and I'm noticing that the way we've been interacting lately is, is not really working for me right now. So, you know, I, I kind of need to make some adjustments in how we 
are doing our friendship. Um, can we talk about this? Mm. So that's kind of like the, <laughs> the, the line of the sand to bring up with someone. And um, I think people often appreciate the honesty, not always, right? Some people might be a little offended and you can say, you know, I really enjoy our time together, our friendship together, however, what makes sense for you. And um, I just want to make some changes and a little changes or something like that. So that's a start. Yeah, I guess um, uh, uh, it's like everything else. Um, when things have changed and you feel uncomfortable about it, uh, if you get to a certain point, you have to risk blowing apart the friendship. If that, I mean, that's, I think, what would prevent us from having a conversation with that other person. But then again, if you're ever going to find out what it is, it could be something very simple. You know, like right, you say, exactly. they have a, they have a uh, uh, health issue that's uh, really serious and they just can't think about taking care of anybody else for the moment. Well, that's fine. You understand that. You can, like you say, recalibrate. Very yeah. valuable information. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. And you know, and if it sounds too difficult to have this conversation, you know, um, get support either by yourself, you know, with a counselor or coach to kind of think it through and talk about like, what do you really want here? And, you know, sometimes it might be like, wow, you know what, this friendship, I feel like we are on different pages, we're going in different directions. I'm not sure if matters or is that important to me to maintain it so you know think hard about that because i feel like relationships are um you know what make to me as the work i do you know life worth living and yet yeah. sometimes if we don't feel cared for if we feel regularly judged if we feel like that person is very competitive with us or they're criticizing you know our children or our choices sometimes you know we don't have to always be pleasing others we get to also choose for ourselves so Get support if you need some some way to sort it out with someone impartial, and then um, and then have the conversation. Good good idea, and uh, I think it reinforces Michelle how important relationships really are. Friendships mm. are important relationships. Is I guess what I'm trying to say, and I, I think uh, you've given us some really good things to think about. Thank you. Yeah. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.